How's it going everybody? Josh here from Spawn Fly Fish and today we are going to be tying up a polychaete worm. And this is inspired from a Scandinavian fly called the Brenda's Worm. We have a variation of this for steelhead, but this one's gonna be very Puget Sound oriented. And the one cool thing about us here in the Pacific Northwest is that uh, many of us find ourselves looking uh, on social media at all these amazing uh, fly tires from around the world. And there's a ton of them in Scandinavia. And specifically, most or if not all of those patterns perfectly translate to our fisheries here in Puget Sound. So we're going to get after it and see if we can't bring to life this pattern in excellent fashion for you. So first things first, we got a Daiichi 2581 and some Danville 210. So to start off, we got some Sanyo Shaggy Dub. This is a pretty cool product, but it is a little bit of a nightmare to use. Um, it's very stringy. It's kind of got a little elasticity to it. Um, so we're just gonna get a little bit of this. We're gonna throw it off the back. You can treat it much like you treat rubber legs. Just a couple wraps here and we're gonna Pull that to the other side. Perfect. And for, for when we use the Sanyo's uh, Shaggy Dub on this pattern, it doesn't have to be perfect. These are all the little legs that are gonna come off these polychaete worms. If you see them swimming around, they got these little legs on the side of them. And this is gonna mimic that. All right, so then the bulk of this fly is gonna use polychaete semi-seal dubbing that we designed specifically for this sort of representation. So we're going to line up some of these semi-seal fibers and I'm just using the standard semi-seal, not the mega for this fly. And these flies range in, or these worms range in size, but we're not gonna tie a huge one, but also won't be a super small fly. Um, as some of you guys know, I'm, I'm not super keen on throwing small flies in Puget Sound. I do like throwing big flies. It's really cool to truly watch these cutthroat and coho chase down uh, these flies. And this is one you'll be able to see in the water and you sure will be able to see those fish behind it chasing it. So we're lining up some more semi-seal here. We're, on each section of this fly, we're gonna save a little bit of room here, right behind the eye, to add a little bit more of that Senyo's Shaggy Dub. And, and the one of the challenging things is getting a, it evenly distributed. And don't, don't let that over, uh, be a huge concern when you're tying this. You're, you're creating just a buggy mess here on some hooks and shanks, and those fish are gonna love it. And it is and it is tough to like line up the fibers. That's also something that I would recommend not really worrying too much about. Just get it on there, and you can trim it afterwards. like that buggy mess we got going on right there. Alrighty, so we saved a little bit of room there. And then we're just gonna put a teeny bit of semi-seal over the top of that and it'll help push those stray shaggy dubs back and flow the way we want it to. But remember, we don't want to get any of our thread wraps in these eyes. Since this is an articulated fly, we want that full range of motion. All right, perfect. And as you can see, that's already looking pretty buggy and we are just getting started. Cool. Finish. 
time for a little zap a gap here. Yeah, so if you're, if you're uh, fishing Puget Sound or the saltwater in, in Washington, really recommend checking out a lot of those Scandinavian tires because what they're doing translates really, really well. And you'll be able to learn a lot and take a lot of that information and tweak it to fit your fishing needs here. All right, so we got an 11 millimeter spawn shank here. And we're going to throw that on right there and tie it down. And we're gonna bounce right back to some spawn semi-seal polykeet. And this, this will, the two main ingredients of this fly are just the spawn semi-seal polykeet and the Sanyo's shaggy dub in black. So it's not something you need a ton of ingredients for. If you have some polykeet dubbing already, this is a good way to utilize it. I do like adding the shaggy dub. And there's some, there's some brushes that kind of work and act like what we're creating here. But I just, I don't know. I think I prefer this. We're lining up that semi seal. You could definitely do a loop here with uh, but as you know, we we'll do a lot of loops. And then we're gonna add the shaggy dub. That's really messy. That's what we want. Yeah, that's... and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about if you pick up some of the shaggy dub, and maybe uh, Senyo's got a little bit better of a way of how to utilize this. But I do really like it. It's just kind of hard to get on your hook or your shank, and then just a teeny bit. Spawn semi seal, and we're done with that section. I'm trying to stay away from crowding the eye. Like I said, it's, it becomes imperative when we want to really maintain that full range of motion and get the most out of each articulation. Cool. little zap a gap and then this is really where you have a lot of creative freedom how big do you want this worm to be um, I'm gonna go one more 11 millimeter shank but we do have a plethora of sizes of shanks available for you to customize this worm any which way you'd like that down in the vise a little bit more so it doesn't move around on me. There we go. And that's one thing to remember is to keep that thing tight. Cool. All right. Back to the polykeet. And this is really repetitive, so um, I don't need to talk through it again and again and again, but same exact thing we're doing here. Semi seal, shaggy dub, clump and dump. 
and bail it back. And and this isn't this isn't really a fly we're looking for a taper with, so don't think you need to start adding more semi seal as we progress up this fly. These worms don't have a whole lot of taper to them, frankly. If you look at one. And if you if you do live near Puget Sound and you want to see one, the best way to do that is to wait till low tide on the dock and then to pull uh, one of the sets of muscles off of a piling and you will find them loaded up on there. So this one I'm hugging the eye a little close so I don't know if I'm going to be able to add some semi seal over it but that's okay. So we do want to make sure we get some of these shaggy deb legs in there. Those are very lifelike. All right, so I don't really have enough room here to add the semi seal, but if you watch some of our videos, you can, I would assume you can tell that we're team one take. So if we mess it up a little bit, the reality is that we're not all perfect tires. And it doesn't need to be perfect on camera for you to see what we're doing. Alrighty, and those those uh, shaggy dub set actually laid down really nicely. All right, so bringing this life this fly to life, we got a micro jig shank football bead. We're gonna bring that right there, unhook, slide it down, resituate it, and this is a 7.5 millimeter football bead. And this thing is really going to be bring that fly down and really create that articulation that we want. Uh, it's going to really kick the rest of that fly. We're going to throw some lead free wire wraps in there just to secure that bead up the neck of the shank here. And then we're going to get ready to we're gonna seal that and then we're going to tie down the arm. I have no doubt that you could use this for small mouth as well with a lot of success. This is specifically designed for replicating a polyheat worm in Puget Sound. Sweet. Alrighty, it's starting to really come to life here. And Same story, different piece of the fly. Polykeet dubbing, line it up. Bail it back. And move forward. Alrighty, we're gonna make sure that we leave some room here. We do want the shaggy dub and the semi seal on this one, so we're gonna make sure we sneak it in just a tad bit early. We left about four millimeters behind the bead there, and I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on this shaggy dub on this part here. Pick up any of those loose strands that have fallen, which they will. Uh, When you pull these out of the bag, like I said, it's pretty springy. It likes to get away from you. 
but it is a really cool product. It's really cool in the water too. Pete ties a sculpin using utilizing this stuff and one of these days we'll get them to showcase that sculpin on here because it is really deadly fly. Alrighty, we are almost done. We got those little legs sticking out right there with the Shenyos Senior Shaggy Dub. We're going to sneak on some semi seal here right behind that bead, as close to the bead as we can get it to. Feel it back. Check to make sure we got even distribution. Could use a little bit of love underneath. And then we are ready to go fishing with this polykeep worm. you'll see that we use quite a few different worm-like flies here. Whether they're in the mud, the barnacles, or the pilings, there's a lot of big worms here in the Pacific Northwest. Alrighty, whip finish. Throw another one on there. We'll sneak in some Zappa Gap, and we are ready to go. There it is. So you can brush this out. I don't have a brush with me right now, but as you can see, that is a lot of articulated goodness here and creating a polykeep worm. If you look at this, you'll have some of these Senyo Shaggy Dub fibers that stick out a little longer. This is a perfect time to go in them trim those. I don't want them to be crazy long. So this is a perfect time to go in there and snip them off. Like I said, be sure to check out some of these Scandinavian tires if you're tying for Puget Sound. A lot of phenomenal stuff. I think you guys will enjoy it. And hopefully this gives you a little insight as to what they're creating over there and how we can replicate it here for our home waters in the Pacific Northwest. If there's anything we can do, always reach out. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you very much.